Hey, and welcome back to the Llama Stack tutorial, where we're learning all about building generative AI applications for production using the open source Llama Stack project from Meta. So far, we've covered why Llama Stack and how to get a Llama Stack server running locally and run inference. But in this video, we're going to be learning how to chat with your documents using RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is a pattern that enables your application to reference and recall information from external documents that it wasn't trained on. Think policies, documentation, PDFs, invoices, spreadsheets, and much more. Now let's remember that LlamaStack is a server that provides a collection of different REST endpoints, which make it really easy for us as a developer to program in our desired language of choice and be able to swap out different providers, right? So I could call an inference endpoint and not have to worry if I'm going to OpenAI or Olama or VLLM and be able to go from development to production quite easy. Now, the ones that we're gonna be using for this specific RAG or questioning and answering example today are going to be the vector database endpoint where we're going to ingest new documentation and the agents endpoint where we're going to set up a RAG tool, which is going to pull from our vector database as needed, right? Because there's gonna be some questions from our users that don't always need that external database, right? So let's head to the Llama Stack repository and get started from there. So here we are at the Llama Stack repository on GitHub where we took a look last episode on how to install Llama Stack locally as a container with this one liner command, which detects your container engine pulls down the engine for you and starts it as an endpoint on port 8321. Now, LlamaStack provides a lot of different capabilities as we just mentioned, but when we go over to the documentation here at the top right, we can go to the getting started page, which in the last episode, we ran through one, how to run your own local Llama model. And then secondly, how to use a container engine in order to run LlamaStack. And what I'll quickly do right now is one, go ahead and run a model locally. So in my terminal, I'm using Olama or perhaps Rama Llama in order to run Llama. What's up? This is Llama 3.2, or you could use the latest version. And in a new window, I'm also going to copy the container command. First, I'm going to point at the port that I want Llama stack to be running on. And then secondly, I'll come over here and copy this command in order to run the container. I'm going to be using Podman instead of Docker for this example. Once this is started, I've got one, a local model that we can use for inference. And two, we've got that Llama stack server that we can use for its different endpoints. So we'll give it two seconds here and bam, it's running on localhost port 8321. Now, what I want to cover today is the RAG technique in order to use our private or unique data with a large language model that hasn't been trained on the information. So when I come down here, we've got a few different demos. Inference, which we took a look at in the last video in order to write a haiku. That was a lot of fun. And we're going to take a look at today building a RAG agent which is in this example, going to answer questions about TorchTune. It's part of the PyTorch project in order to train and develop large language models. So I'm going to go ahead and copy in all of this code into my code editor. Here I've cloned the LlamaStack project locally. And if I go into the documentation folder, we're just going to open up the zero to hero guide as an example, because we're gonna be testing out these examples in later episodes. And I'll go ahead and create the file ragagent.py. Now let's go ahead and paste all of this content in here. I'm going to be using the Jupyter extension as a part of VS Code in order to run this example line by line doing shift return. So here we can see that we've uh, already initialized our virtual environment. You can do a source VENV in order to do so, install the requirements. For example, the llama stack client that we did with a pip install llama stack client earlier in the previous episode. Now, the first step is connecting to the Llama stack client. So this is running locally as a container on port 8321. It's a great as a developer that I can do this in a container locally. And then I have the same capabilities when I move to my production server on Kubernetes or on a bigger machine. Now, the first step is creating a vector database instance. And this is where LlamaStack starts to be really helpful because what we're gonna do is call LlamaStack server and we're going to list the different models and specifically pick out the first embedding model that we have available. Now we could also do this from the terminal, right? We're using the Python SDK here uh, as an import, but we could also do a pip install LlamaStack if you don't already have it. Uh, and I already got it here. So I'll do a LlamaStack client 
And here we can see all of the different available commands in order to interact with our Llama Stack server. What I wanna do is inspect some of the models that we have. So we'll do a models, and then we have the option to list and register new ones. Uh, but when we go ahead and do this Llama Stack list, we list the available models. And here we can see that the first one is actually that embedding model that we're gonna use, uh, mini LM, which is doing embedding. So taking text and converting that into vectors so that we can use it for search later. Now, what's happening here is, well, let's go ahead and run this uh, with shift return, uh, that we're doing get and post request in order to one, check those models, right? As we just did from our CLI, but also to create a new vector database instance. So we're creating a new vector DDB based on the first provider uh, that we have available. And with LlamaStack, we can switch and swap different providers. Let's check which provider it's actually using. So we're gonna use the llama stack command, which is the more operation side for llama stack and distributions, which is a set of different providers such as VLM or Milvis or whatever kind of distribution I want for my Gen AI application. But we're going to use the list providers command. So we'll do llama stack list providers, and then we're just going to search for vector IO. And just because we specified the first available vector uh, database, it's just going to be ChromaDB, but this client vector database register command that we have here is essentially just creating that new temporary vector database. And the next step here is actually defining which documents we want to ingest. So we've got these different URLs that we're going to add on to this repository of information here that we have for the TorchTune project. So when I come back over here and I clear this, what we can actually do is just check, for example, the chat.rst file. It's just kind of a text file here, and we're going to print the first 25 lines. So this is a good example of unique information that a model wasn't trained on, right? It probably doesn't know how to prepare a data set to do this specific task, but this is information that we can then enumerate and turn into chunks that we're going to place in that vector database. So when I actually go ahead and do this right here, the creation of the documents, then we can insert that document uh, data type into the vector database here uh, in a selection of 512 tokens per chunk. So we're splitting it up roughly by that amount of information. And there's a lot of tools out there such as Docling, which can do this in a very intelligent way in order to keep different types of information that might be related together when you're doing this in a hybrid chunking format. But this is a very basic type of example. What we're doing here is using the client tool runtime and using the rag tool to insert it into that vector database. And what we're gonna do next is pick a chat LLM. So we had the embedding LLM in order to take our text and turn that into vectors. Now we're using this text LLM to be able to pull natural language together. So we're providing the first Olama LLM that we have uh, when we do a client.models.list as we've done earlier in our command line. And the last part is the fun part, right? We're creating this RAG agent. The instructions here are, you are a helpful assistant, use the RAG tool to answer questions as needed. So it's really cool is RAG by itself is always gonna pull information, but this intelligent agent is going to only pull from its database when it doesn't have enough coverage or information about a certain topic, right? There's a lot of ways to tweak this. We're doing a very basic uh, kind of a rag agent here, but I'm going to go ahead and run this. So we're creating uh, with a post request, a new agent, uh, and we're getting back information about, hey, uh, how to use the vector database and how to actually uh, call this tool. And so when we're using model context protocol, it's quite similar to this. And we're gonna show that in the next episode, but simply creating a new agent that's connecting to Llama Stack with our model of choice, providing the instructions and the tool it's capable of using. That's all you have to do to create a agent specifically for RAG in this example. Now what we're gonna do is create a new agent session. So we're going to do RAG agent.create session so that we have history. So whenever asked a new question, it's going to understand the previous context uh, from the LLM. And then we're going to ask well, specifically, I'll just ask one question here. What is TorchTune? So I actually have no idea what the project is about. So this is a really good use case for myself as an example. And the last question is asking the actual prompt, right? So we're gonna stream this out and you're gonna be able to see this in the right-hand side. 
And the first step is that we're asking, uh, hey, what is Torch Tune? And so you can see that uh, the tool was executed. And I'll just pause this here for a second. Oh, good to go. It's finished. But you can see what's happening is it's extracting the query of Torch Tune, right? It's calling the tool with the query of, hey, do you have similar information to Torch Tune? It's doing a knowledge search tool and it's finding five chunks of information in our database that is related. So if I actually go out here and I scroll way, way, way to the right, you can see that's all the raw information. And what the LLM does, that Llama 3.2 that we're running, is it takes that augmented information along with its ability to work in natural language and gives me this final answer back. Torch Tune is a hyperparameter tuning library for Python. So just like that, in less than 100 lines of code, we have connected to LlamaStack, created a vector database, created our documents, inserted them, and created a RAG agent that will dynamically pull information from that database. And we can use all these different providers that LlamaStack uh, enables us to use. So we could use a local LLM. We could use a hosted one from ChatGPT. We could use different types of databases. And when I'm actually ready to move this into production, I don't have to change a line of code. And what's also really cool is let me show you the logs in the terminal. So remember when we started up LlamaStack as a server in a container? Well, when I actually asked this question, you can see the telemetry logs and the different calls that have been made out. For example, registering that we're using Llama 3.2. And then the next step, hey, you are a helpful assistant, passing in some of the chunks of information, right? Uh, what it actually does. And we can see, hey, if we wanted to add guardrails or any other type of capabilities, that's where we can use LlamaStack and that's where it really shines. So now you know how to pull in your unique organizational or private data into an application with an LLM and run it completely on premise, but have the ability to scale up whenever you need using LlamaStack. Now, I hope you join me on the next episode as we learn how to build agents with LlamaStack. So using model context protocol and the built-in agents with LlamaStack, you're going to learn how to access information from the internet, call APIs, work with a lot of different cool functionality using agentic capabilities in your application. Feel free to like the video if you learned something, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next episode as we learn all about how to use LlamaStack. See ya.